you for your interest in this video. It is a busy day beyond the hedge, but it is also a busy day this side of the hedge. Today I'm dealing with all the bulbophyllums films that I have. Mainly, I want to pot up the one that I got from Matt by Nature. This is Bulbophyllum plumatum. And it is very, very urgent because look, we have spikes. Look at that. And if they're not in a pot, they're not going to open properly. We got to get a move on. I can't believe it formed spikes in this setup. Secondly, I have my Bulbophyllum contorticepalum from many moons ago. I received it. And we did a daisy chain pot up with Akadama, but you can see that some bulbs have failed in the back. That's okay, not concerned, but it is starting to come onto its own a little bit at the front here, and it has a new growth that it is trying to mature. I need to do this whole thing again because you can see the pot is broken. It's just, from an aesthetic point of view, not very pleasing. We're going to address that. Depending how much time this takes, I'd like to update you on my Trias Disiflora that I got from Afri Orchids last year and also my Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry. But the main focus is on these two. The others, time permitting, will follow. And the reason I have to proceed now is because these have not had as much sun as what you're seeing today up until now. I have to be a little bit cautious with what I'm doing with them in this gorgeous sunshine. So yeah, busy, busy, let's get to it. First of all, what I want to do with my Plumatum is do the classic setup. It is semi-hydro, even though this one is going to be living indoors in the winter. My little golden rule is anything that can live outdoors all year round goes into semi-hydro. Anything that has to come inside during the winter will go into a self-watering setup. However, I do not have inserts for these pots and I am very limited when it comes to the round inner pots for this setup. So my plan for this coming winter will of course be to find the bottom shelves for the orchids in semi-hydro. Sometimes I can't stick to my preference. So when that happens, I have to innovate. Now, my plan straightforward is to get some of my dirty shard lecca that has been sterilized. Put that at the bottom of the pot because this is not exactly the ideal media for any setup unless a very robust orchid comes along that doesn't care about nasty media. I don't have many of those. So in order to utilize that and not have that standing around all the time doing nothing, just occupying real estate, it's going in as crocking. Bulbophyllums in general do not have deep roots when they're in pots. They prefer to be mounted and then the roots can extend without any limits. I don't have that luxury in my very, very dry climate. Right, my tag has gone in where the holes are. That is a note to self for when these orchids are indoors in the winter and I pick up the pot. I know where the holes are. I won't be spilling stuff everywhere. The idea being now to create a very wet environment for them so that the humidity around the roots is always provided as well as around the leaves. For that, I have Akadama mixed with grit. Akadama is very water retentive, very small kernels, doesn't break down in my climate. So that's going in as the next layer. Try not to waste it, Nina. Okay, the next thing being checking the position of the orchid now. We can have a little look at her because when she came to me, these pseudobulbs were super, super desiccated. They have plumped up beautifully considering just how paper thin they were. They are recovering besides that producing spikes. So this orchid is very, very busy, but she has a good root system. And all I've been doing basically is just keeping that root system wet while she was in that makeshift container. Now, the idea here is, of course, a rambling Bulbophyllum. Yeah. Now, I don't do front back. I try to place my orchids in the middle based on their growth habit. But um, when it comes to Bulbophyllums, their growth habit tends to go everywhere. I was thinking of daisy chaining this orchid, but it would appear that she is going to be quite steady in the pot after she finishes blooming, she is going to produce new growths and then take off growing again. So what I'm going to do is use the diagonal of the pot 
and put her into the middle, but I do need to raise her up a bit. So let's put more akadama in, and I hope I have enough. If not, we need to get some more. So seeing as there's no real front or back to this orchid, got something here that has failed. Don't tear that off. We can just nip that off gently. There we go. Make sure we have our spikes, because if she does want to bloom for us, well, hey, why not? There is a third spike coming right down underneath here. Can you believe this? That is why these orchids prefer to be mounted. But hey, we'll work with what we've got and do the best we can so that she can bloom and hopefully grow well. Let's try that again. There we go. This means she's on the damp media with her roots in immediate contact. The spike will have to find its way towards the light here. And I'm going to top up with medium to small size lava rock. I see one root trying to find its own way up into the air. Not in my climate, buddy. Not in my climate. You are going in there. Come on. It's easier for you if you comply. Trust me, I know me. I've been around for several decades. <laughs> okay, two hands are needed. Let's go. You are going down. He needs a little bit more convincing here. There we go, told you. Now, if other roots then in the future choose to go aerial and whatever, that is up to them and that's perfectly fine as well because the humidity of the akadama will allow for at least those roots to extend to some degree without immediately desiccating the moment it gets too windy and too dry in my climate which is the case my yearly average humidity is 30 percent some months i go into the 80s doesn't last very long so I have to work with the worst case scenario and work around that, which is 30%. And if I get anything more than that, well, great. I can work around the setup and I can also be adapting a little bit my watering or my misting based on what the day is offering me. Let's just keep those spikes in mind. This root also wants to do its own thing. Good luck with that. There we go. Now we're gonna take her out of the sun. I am not going to be flushing this orchid through just yet. We'll do that at the end. My concern is I don't want the leaves to burn. I'll be back with this orchid to flush her through because I have my reasons. All right, next up we have our Contorti Sepalum, which has never bloomed for me. The Akadama honestly has worked a treat. Back in the day, this was an experiment because I was using Ceramis, but couldn't source Ceramis locally, so... I changed to Akadama and it was just great. It really did its thing. You can see how the orchid is rooted in. I thought I could lift her up, but nope. We do need to do the squeeze, squeeze and see if we can't get her out. Let's see. I did a daisy chain with this one because she was pretty much rootless and to stabilize her in the pot, I took wire and hopefully I can show you that if she would lift herself out. She's tighter in there than I thought. Hey, 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 don't tell me I need to break the pot further. You can hear it cracking. At least I hope you can. This pot is shot to bits. Look at that. Oh, well, let's see what we crocked it with. I'm assuming Lekka. Shards of Lekka. There we go. Just like I did with the other one that we just potted up. Let's get this out. And the roots went all the way down to the microfiber. Wow, okay. Well, we'll relieve the orchid of the microfiber. Won't be needing that. There we go. Not too bad, not too bad. I'm not disappointed with the result of what I'm seeing here. Let's see if we can free that root. Yeah, I like it. And we will continue along these lines. So let's check. Oh, that just came off relatively easily. And now it's just holding onto the wire in the back. 
which is also going to come off relatively easily because that's on a pseudobulb that failed, desiccated. And here we have the end of that dead pseudobulb rhizome thing here. Awesome. And we're left with something that is actually thoroughly enjoying the Akadama. Look at that. Look at the little hairs on those roots. Huh. Superb. So this orchid is well on her way and that is what we're going to maintain. First of all, we're going to put her in the shade. And then off camera, I'm going to pick out all this shardy lecker. I don't need to sterilize this anymore. I can reuse it in the semi-hydro pot. That is what I could fish out of the Akadama. I've rinsed it off. I didn't need to sterilize it again, seeing as I'm using it for the same orchid. So we're going to use the rest of our stash shards. We're going to fill up with the next level up because that's what I've got. In the old pot, I still have more bigger shards, but I also have more orchids to pot up where I can use that. So I'm not going to waste time cleaning that up now. So that's going to go in as that layer. There we go. I love it when products are being reused. Once again, my tag goes where the holes are. So that is done. No jiggling of the orchid should there be any instability, which I highly doubt in this case, because at the end of the day, we saw that root system. It was amazing. We're also going to top up with fresh Akadama. Even though it's clean, you can see how dusty it is. So even though it's been rinsed with water, wow just goes to show it's been rinsed strained left to dry rinse strained left to dry and then went through a sieve before it went into this container and wow and that is what I want to check on with the flush afterwards but first of all let's get, not get ahead of ourselves let's get this orchid into position clearly one direction of growth but I'm not tucking her back into the corner Bulbophyllums will surprise. I'm just going to make a little bit of a well here. Get her in a little deeper. I'm going to fill around with the Akadama that I harvested from the other pot. You can see that after two years of this Akadama being in a pot and just being flushed through wet all the time, it's holding its shape beautifully. That's what I appreciate about it. If you were to now squeeze it between your fingers at this stage, yes, it would go into like a clay paste. But we don't want to crush it with our fingers. We just want to make sure that we can distribute it around the base of the orchid. We're not going to bury that pseudobulb too much. You see, I didn't even use a wire this time around. No need. She's got her own root system, which is awesome. And now I'm just going to fill up with the remainder of the Akadama I have left. just so that her roots and leaves have plenty of humidity. Because of her previous setup, not having lava rock on the surface as a dressing kind of top dressing, I'm not gonna do that for this orchid this time around either. She seemed to be quite happy without the top dressing. The other one needs it because of the roots. They were going everywhere. I need something to hold the roots in place until she establishes her own roots that grow into the pot. There we go. Done. Another container empty. And now the only thing I have in here left of my Akadama stash is what is in here. And yes, I am going to recycle this because my orchid is really, really healthy. And for any future seedlings, etc., this Akadama is going to be perfectly fine. I'm just going to let it dry and then strain it and use it again once it's dry. I don't really like working with wet Akadama because as I mentioned to you, if you squeeze it, you see, it turns into a paste. We don't want that. As long as you handle it gently, it's perfectly fine. And if your temperatures do not go below zero, it will not degrade. It's indefinite. I love the stuff. Worked out really well for me in my time where I couldn't get any ceramics, which is my preferred media of choice in these situations. But the Akadama was super handy, super useful. And now I have Ceramis back, but I'm going to finish using my Akadama simply because I don't like things just sitting in corners unused. Right, let's get the other one. Let's put them on a table, flush them through. 
All right, what I'm trying to look for here now is to see how much dust is coming out of those holes. How discolored is the water? Is it brown, muddy, murky? And I want to make sure that my water starts to run clear if it is murky, because then I know that I have a baseline. Ooh, that one looked very, very murky. That was the dusty, fresh one that we put on. Understandable. Right, we need more water for that one. The plumatum looked really, really clear. So it's just the contortisepalum with the new dry acadama that really needs to get a flush until that water runs clear. This way, should my acadama ever break down, this is what would come out in years and years and years to come. Murky water, that gives me a signal that my acadama is breaking down and I need to get into the pot. Broken down acadama is not a good thing for orchid roots because they like oxygen around their roots. And as we saw with the pasty texture that it takes on when it gets squeezed or squashed, it becomes very, very compact and would end up in suffocating the roots. So let's give this one another good little run for its money with some water. That's looking much better. Yeah, I'm liking the look of it now. You see, clear, and then I have a baseline. If it should get murky, which I doubt very, very much, then I know that I have to intervene and repot. And should these orchids do so, so well, they start climbing out of the pot, clearly I will have to intervene and repot. But other than that, they can stay where they are. And we have moved to the shadiest part of the patio on the east side now, because if you're so inclined, let's have a look at Trias disiflora. I proudly present you Trias disiflora. Look at that. Maybe you were on my channel when I potted this up. Maybe you saw the video. Uh, if you didn't, I'm going to link that below because pretty much this orchid was not potted up. It was placed on top of what we just saw being potted up. Shards of Lekka and then Akadama with grit. This orchid is a warm to hot grower. I was very, very hesitant to purchase this orchid because my climate can get really rough for four to five months of the year and extended periods of climate like that for some orchids that are warm to hot growers really is not ideal. They won't even make it through the first week, but here we are. The reason I just removed that lava rock is because... <laughs> Tug test time. This orchid is rooted in. She is solid, happy, and as snug as a bug in a rug. Rooted into this pot. And literally all the opportunity that I had to work with this orchid was just place her on top of the media. The lava rock around it was to stabilize her and leave her be and don't move her. And all I did was flush, flush, flush. In the meantime, all of that was happening. She was growing these two new growths right here that are a little bit wonky or this one. Two of the ones that are a bit wonky were what she had before, but I'm not sure which one grew wonky. It doesn't matter. Fact of the matter is she lost all the pseudobulbs that she had right here. They desiccated and died. They died before the winter, which had me, of course, very, very concerned. <laughs> was the rest of the orchid going to really struggle through my cold and dark winter, but no, look, rooted in. Happy days. We are a go with Trias disiflora. This has never been something that I've grown before. She was a test and she has amazed me and she has given me some really, really good results. Very, very pleased with her. Now she's going back in the shade because she probably thinks, what is this bright thing on my leaves? I haven't seen that in months and neither should she. She needs bright, bright shade. And finally, Bulbophila Elizabeth and Buckleberry. This one is in two pieces because my last setup had way too much salt buildup around the pseudobulbs and any new growth. It was encrusted along the roots. And I am obviously still working with this one because you can see the Akadama has some salt buildup. Yeah. So during the winter, I've been very conservative with any kind of fertilizer. And I'm not about to start fertilizing now just because she's got a new growth coming. It's a very puny little growth. Some of the bulbs in the back, they had lost their pseudobulbs. They had started to rot a little bit in this setup but I took them off and she hasn't declined further. So it's working, 
but not as efficiently as it has been with the smaller bulb of films. So what I'm going to do now is just give her some plain water so that we get rid of what looks to be dry akadama on the surface. She did bloom for me once, which identified her as an Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry. I wanted a Medusa. That's what I bought. That's not what I got. But anyway, so that little bit of water is going to be plenty because her reservoir fills up. Akadama is super, super wicking. This is a self-watering pot. It is not a semi-hydro pot. I cannot go any smaller and find the bowl inserts on a smaller, smaller size, as mentioned previously. If that were the case, I would have all my bulb of films in a self-watering setup, like my Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry. She is also in there, secured just with a wire around the rhizome. It's a daisy chain style Lee as well, where I then pulled the ends together just to keep her contained in the pot up until the point that she decides to grow out of it because as you can see how this rhizome is rising up away from the media, those roots need to go in to the Akadama. Otherwise, again, in my dry climate, they're gonna fail. In about 30 minutes, all the white Akadama you see here will be well saturated. And here they all are. Just gonna fill up around the roots with a little bit of calcium, magnesium, and seaweed. Even my trias that is not in active growth is now going to get calcium, magnesium, and seaweed because its season is starting right now. I would like to have my plumatum at least bloom one spike so I can document the bloom. And it's going to get calcium, magnesium as well. And there's a bee over here now enjoying my Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry, but sorry, dude, no blooms here just yet. If you stayed to the end, I appreciate your time very much. Thank you. This was an update, repot, a little bit of an overview of all my bulba films, how they progress throughout the winter and well from here on in now we at least have a baseline for the rest of the season and we'll see what comes next have yourself a very very beautiful day on one condition though that you do stay safe please take care bye